Welcome back to the Classical Architecture Workshop. I'm Professor Brandon Rowe, and in today's tutorial, we'll be learning more about the Ionic Order. Specifically, this video will go over how to draw the column base. So, for this video, we'll be using the American Vignola by William Ware. And the Ionic Order is right there in the middle, as we've uh, discussed in the previous video. And as we think about drawing its base um, for the entire column, there's a couple things that we should be aware of. Uh, but first off, just as a reminder, the Ionic Order has these scroll uh, spirals on the column capital itself. And so we will be learning to draw that in the very next video. Um, but as we think about the, the column base um, itself, we're looking at just that uh, lower portion uh, before it hits the ground. So specifically, when we think about Vignola, and if we look at his uh, particular writings on describing the ionic base, um, he uh, creates it uh, using essentially two uh, scotia molds uh, sandwiched in between a couple of uh, bead molds um, with a torus uh, at the top. Um, William Ware, however, uses kind of the standard uh, what's called the attic base uh, as we start to draw this mold. Um, and essentially, you've got a plinth block uh, a torus mold, which is a half radius, um, uh, and then in between uh, that torus and another torus, you have uh, two fillet molds, and then between that, you have a single uh, scotia mold. So uh, that being said, uh, this is a preview of the drawing that we're going to create. Um, note that we're going to set this drawing up so we can draw the full column with the base and the capital, but uh, this video will focus primarily just on that bottom half of the drawing uh, for the ionic base, and we will be drawing it per the standard attic base. Let's get started. As we start this next tutorial for the ionic uh, column base. Um, we're going to do this as if we were drawing both uh, the base and the ionic capital in the same drawing. And so this this is the first of two videos in a sequence. Um, and so we'll set the drawing up that way. Just as we've talked in the past, you're, you'll need a rolling ruler, an architectural scale, a uh, 45 degree triangle, uh, also uh, likely a, uh, a, a large, uh, larger triangle um, or a builder square um, such as this and, and your writing utensil. So, the first thing we are going to do um, as we consider this ionic order drawing is the entire, the scale that we're going to draw this at. Uh, so the previous video looked at drawing the simplified ionic order. And we imagine that uh, the real column that we were going to uh, be constructing was one foot or 12 inches in diameter. And so we created a scale drawing of that. Um, this one, we're going to create a scale drawing of it once again, um, but we're gonna blow up some of those details, zoom into them. And so the scale of our drawing is going to be three inches equals one foot. And so if we're using that same column at 12 inches or one foot in diameter, um, this, this drawing will imagine that every three inches equals one foot. Okay, well that being said, our overall drawing itself is going to be um, eight inches. We're gonna create some graphic scales here on the side. So eight inches up here to the top um, and we're gonna go about seven inches wide here. 
Okay, so as we as we do this, um, usually I would leave a little bit of space here at the bottom for like a title, um, and trying to get about you know half inch or on either side more or less. So let's go ahead and put this first vertical line in. We're gonna mark this up at eight inches, and then horizontally we're going to take this over to about seven inches. That one's not as uh, strict. Okay, so now that we've got that, um, we are going to go ahead and create a couple of graphic scales here on the side. So I'm going to grab my rolling ruler. I'm going to line this up. sure we're parallel here. Strike a line here. And this first one is going to be our overall where we're going to uh, mark off uh, D which is uh, for the scale we're drawing three inches. Um, but off of that one we're going to have a uh, two, uh, a couple of other ones. So I'm going to move over a quarter of an inch um, take this one up the full length of this move down an eighth of an inch create another graphic scale going up okay so with that let's go ahead and get our oops looks like I marked this on accident get our ruler here and we are going to go ahead and mark a couple of these uh, first areas. So the first one we're going to mark is three inches up. We're going to put a tick mark. And then we are going to uh, put another one. Make sure I didn't lose my spot there. Two inches up from that. And then up at three inches above that, we should have the one at eight inches that we created earlier. Okay, and so this next one that we're going to create, uh, so we're saying that this here, this dimension, is D, and this one here is also D. So if I go ahead and continue this three inch mark here for D, I'm going to go ahead and put another mark at one and a half inches. If I was using the three inch scale here, I would put it in the midpoint. Um, but what this is, right, this uh, is our D over two. There. So once again, our half inch, or if we were using our full three inch, we are essentially saying six inches in right there in the middle of the 12 that is where I'm going to put a midpoint line. So you may recall in the earlier drawing that we created for the simplified uh, ionic order uh, the base for the column itself was one half D and so that is that line that we're getting set up here and that's going to be important for us in just a moment. So if we want to go ahead and take that across, that will give us a good starting point. I'm going to use my rolling ruler, pull this up to that half D mark, take that line across. And it's always a good thing occasionally to go ahead and just check that, make sure that is still one and a half inches and it looks like mine actually went a little bit slightly off so I was afraid of that okay let's do this again let's get a better more accurate line here and once again, if I was doing this with a drafting board, it'd be different, um, a lot 
quicker and cleaner, but uh, for our students, we are doing this in our sketchbooks. Okay, so there we go. We've got our base marked out, more or less. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create another graphic scale here on the side uh, because this part, this bottom part of the base, we're going to subdivide this into three additional spaces. Or in other words, if we were to split D up into six equal parts, um, and three of those are in half of that, that is the next graphic scale that we're going to create. So if I grab my rolling ruler here, pull this off about a quarter of an inch, strike that up to one half D, move it over another eighth of an inch there. Okay. So for this one, if this is one and a half inches, right, we're splitting that into three parts we are going to use our half inch scale. That will equally divide that into three parts for us. So using my half inch scale, I've got a tick mark for each of those three divisions. So we're gonna call this D over six, right? Because we're subdividing this. So one sixth of D is going to equate to one of these. So that gives us that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, grab one of our triangles and we are going to take this bottom first little tick mark one third of the way up. We're going to take that across and this is going to be uh, the first element of uh, the base of our ionic column. We call this the plinth. All right, so now that we've got that in place, I think it would be a good time to go ahead and mark the center line of our full column here. And so to do that, I'm going to use my ruler uh, because roughly from this side over, I'm going to make a mark that is right in the four inch range four inches from the left and I'll do this at the top as well okay line this up and like I said this is going to be the center line for our column Make sure this is lined up okay all right so once again, instead of doing a, just a solid line, I'm doing a dash dot for this center line. I'm taking this all the way up below the bottom as well as above the top there. So there I've got my center line for my drum. I'm going to go ahead and put this at the top, CL for my center line. And now the next thing that I need to do is what is the overall thickness of my column? As you recall, it's the same D, right? As it gets into the shaft uh, part of it. Um, but here at the base, this little line that we created, we call this the plinth, okay? So this plinth is 8 sixth D. So if we recall here, if we divide D into six parts, that's a half inch for each of those parts. So if I go eight, uh, two additional half inches, that's going to put me instead of three inches at four inches. So if I go ahead and take my ruler here, I'm gonna line up my two inches right there on the center. And I'm gonna put a mark here at the four and at the zero, so I've got four inches on either side. Let's make sure we're we're still in focus here. All right, there we go. Okay, so down here at the bottom, I am going to create 
a uh, excuse me a small graphic scale underneath the, the very bottom of our drawing and this is going to give us that eight six location All right, I'm going to take that down just a little bit, an eighth of an inch. All right, there we go. Perfect. So with that, I am going to use my ruler once again. I'm going to line it up. every half inch I'm going to put a tick mark and what we'll see is that by doing this we now have if that was D our six uh, excuse me uh, six parts to, for D and now we've got eight six. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. I've got eight over six D. I'm going to take this up, this vertical line. I'm going to take that up just to this part. Um, just up to that top of the plinth line on either side. Perfect. And so, once again, this bottom part is called the plinth. P-L-I-N-T-H. The plinth. Great. Okay, so from here, um, we're going to go ahead and create another graphic scale here on the side. Um, we're going to create two additional ones. Uh, the first one we're going to create here uh, is going to be right adjacent here, and then we're going to subdivide some of these other divisions. So if I go ahead and grab my rolling ruler, place it here on the far left, pull off of that and this next graphic scale is going to be the top two-thirds um, that we split off originally and then right adjacent to that I will create one additional one just that full length the two-thirds there we'll come back to that in just a minute Okay, so for this um, two-thirds area, we're going to subdivide this into three equal parts. So to do this, we're going to use our one-inch scale. So this is the one with the uh, big number one on it. And if I set this on here, you'll see that I go from 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. So if I'm trying to divide 12 into three equal parts, every four um, uh, inches, essentially, I would put a, a, a little mark there. So I put one at four. I'm also going to put one at eight. And then I'm going to take this, uh, slide my ruler down just to the next line, the graphic scale we just created. And I'm also going to put one at 4 and at 8. Just like that. And so this, these, uh, this bottom third on the next graphic scale, we're not going to use that one, um, but these 
two upper two thirds, we're going to split each of those into then four smaller uh, divisions. So once again, I'm going to use that one inch scale. And since we already put a mark at the number four and eight, it's already equally divided for us. So now we just put a mark at one, two, three, and four is already marked. Five, six, seven, and eight is marked for us. Great. So with that, we're now going to uh, take some of these these lines across for us. And actually, one thing I almost forgot before we uh, get away from here. Let's go back to our one inch scale. I'm going to slide this up just a little bit beyond so that the number one is centered on that half D. So I'm going to go vertical on this, just another one above that. Um, and that, that's going to be helpful because we're going to create a molding off of that line. So right here, you can see where that half D is. One of those same little uh, marks using the one inch scale, we just added another uh, thing there. All right, so let's go ahead and strike across some of these lines. So let's do the one that is just above D. Take that across. Uh, what that is going to serve as is a fillet for us. From there, we are going to go down three. I'm going one, two, three down. Take that line across. And that is going to be a torus for us. Okay, so it should look something like that. From there, we're going to go ahead and take that, that major division where we did the, the top third. We're going to take that line across. And what that is going to be is another fillet. So what we have once we draw this is essentially a fillet, a torus, and a fillet. And then this next part, um, we are going to go down three more from this top one we just made. So we're essentially one above from this guy right here. And I'm going to erase this since we don't really need this area. So let's go ahead and create that line. So we've got fillet, torus, fillet, and then this area right here is our Scotia molding. And then past the Scotia molding, we're going to have another fillet. And that we just keep going down one more. And then the remainder here, that is another torus. Okay, so first off, the question is, how do we then begin drawing this first torus molding? Um, and then what are some of these other lines that we're going to need to take up? So first off, we are going to go ahead and take up vertically uh, through a dashed line. Let's see, no, my rolling ruler might be the best one for this. 
So we're going to be pulling this and creating a vertical line. So we already created the face of this plinth here. If we go over a half inch here, we're going to do a dashed line through all of these moldings until we get to the top. And then we're going to do a solid line. I'm going to take that about halfway up the drawing on one side. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to dash this line through all of these moldings. And then once we get past that top, we'll do a solid line again. And what that's going to give us is our uh, normal column width. So the diameter, D, which should be 3 inches. So if we want to double check that, we can take our ruler and check. It is right on 3 inches in width. Okay, so let's start with this bottom torus. So to, to get this bottom torus, we are going to use our 45 degree triangle here. We're going to place it so that at the top of this plinth that we just created, uh, we're going to draw a lightly a 45 degree angled line on one side. And we're going to take this over and flip it around and actually if we uh, take this vertical line up just put a little mark here at the intersection now we're going to take a 45 degree line down from that point as if we took the plinth all the way up because what that is going to give us is the center point for our half circle. Um, as, as you may recall, I'll just dash this in. Uh, we've got a, uh, we're essentially creating a box. And the box enables us to then create our circle. Um, you could use your compass for this. We're just going to eyeball it. Um, but if I go ahead and add a, a quarter round here at the top, and then another quarter round here at the bottom, and then this little flat part, that then becomes our torus on this side on the left. So if you, if you went ahead and, and dashed in the rest of this, you would see the full circle. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing on this other side. All right, we'll add the 45 there. We are going to just draw in lightly that vertical line. And then taking down from, oops, excuse me, from this corner here, drawing a 45 diagonal line down. Once again, that gives us the center of our circle. If I dash a vertical line up and a vertical line through the middle, that enables us to visualize the quarter round on the bottom and on the top for this torus. And once again, if we fill in the box and dash in the rest of the circle, you can see that that circle um, is, is fully there. So. Once again, a torus is only a half round. So we're going to label this T-O-R-U-S, torus mold. And then next, we have a fillet. That fillet, right, is just a flat molding. It actually just goes straight up from the center point of that circle 
on both sides there and then we're going to create a scotia molding but before that we're going to kind of reverse engineer this and go back to the top so up here at the top we're going to create the second torus mold so right here in this area and we can go ahead and label that just so we can make sure we know where we are putting that torus molding So here, we're going to do that same box method where we create a 45 degree diagonal. We're actually going to create it, that box, off of this side right here. So if I'm taking this dashed line up for each of the sides of my column, line my ruler up, slide it over, Go ahead and put that 45 degree there. I'm going to go ahead and slide it onto this other side and do the same thing. This time going from the top down. Okay, flip my ruler over. Start on this side, the right. Line that up with the bottom. Okay, and now I've got my center. If I want, I can dash in to make that square have four quadrants in it. I'm going to slide this over and finish it on the other side. Strike that 45, dash that line up, subdivide it again, and now I can go ahead and create a half circle with a torus on both sides. Perfect. So once we've created that second torus mold there, um, as you recall, it is separated by two fillets. So this first fillet we're just going to take up from the center, and the second one underneath, down below. Same on the other side, right up from that center, or the half of the circle, and down below. Wonderful. Okay. So this next part is, the Scotia mold is a little bit tricky. Um, and the way that we're going to do it is, it's, it's composed of two uh, curves. Um, the first is uh, pretty much a, almost a, uh, another half round, um, if you will. And then the rest uh, takes it down to the bottom. Um, if we were blowing this up in a moldings class, we would actually get into uh, more of this specific science behind drawing it. Um, but what we're going to do here is create the bottom of another circle here. And uh, to do that, if we go up one, or if we're just going down two from this four divisions here, I don't need to strike a line all the way across. I'm mostly just going to strike a, a light line here on both sides. So if I take the dash that fillet line and just take it down to that line that we just created, what we're going to do in this area right here is create another half circle, if you will. So it's almost the inverse, if you want to view it as that, of the torus area. So we're going to take it to that part right there. And then from there, we're just going to take it all the way down gradually, gradual slope, 
there to the bottom. And actually, it is slightly, looks like my line was a little bit off here. Because it should be a 2 down here. So if I make that first circle a little bit bigger. Down there. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay. You know, same with this other side. This, this line is not as far down as it should be. Okay. So once again, we are creating almost a half circle, and then it's going to slide the rest of the way down until it meets that top of the fillet there. So once again, this is called the Scotia SCO. T I A. And as we learned earlier in our moldings lecture, uh, the Scotia really stands uh, for little cave, right? Because we're creating a little cave, and if the sun was coming in here, it's going to create some shadow. All right, so the next part that we need to do is from this fillet here, going back to the column. Uh, itself uh, we're going to have a conge mold and we had this same one in the doric order um, and so to create this if we we're using our 45 degree triangle and we put it at that intersection the corner of the fillet and the column shaft we take a 45 up and we continue this vertical line up here, this would become the center point um, for my compass. And I'm going to produce a quarter round that transitions from the fillet up to the side of the column, uh, its shaft. So once again, we'll do that on the opposite side using our 45 degree triangle slide it over to this intersection here, pull this up, dash up that line, that becomes the center point, and then we're going to strike quarter round molding as it transitions to the side of the column. Okay, and once again that is called the conge, C-O-N-G-E. A little accent on it and then in between these we have fillets moldings so we'll go ahead and add those here so we know all of the different parts and pieces for our ionic column base. Okay, so for Vignola and others, oftentimes they refer to this as the attic base because it's essentially two torus molds um, with a scotia in between. So the last thing we're gonna do here is if I go up one inch in uh, middle of this two inch mark that we created and if I take that across line right at the center I'm going to stop lift up my pencil take it over about a quarter of an inch or half of an inch and then continue and what that is going to become is my break line for my column. 
because up above this we're going to then continue our drawing and that is going to be the column capital. So that's it for this uh, tutorial video. Thanks for joining us with the Ionic Column Base.